Good afternoon, welcome back to the channel and a happy Easter to you all. Today we've gone up north to a little beach called Zor, which is one of the most stunning beaches in Shetland. Probably not the nicest of days. Over the last few weeks I've been really enjoying using an old camera of mine, the Insta360. And today we're going to have a look at the limitations of it and the best bits about it and we'll hopefully get a picture. Told you this place was spectacular. So it's called Rose Sands, but it's known as Zor because that's the name of the farm that's up there. So most people would know it as Zor. But let's have a think of the first things that's amazing about this camera. On a day like today, it's waterproof and it's totally raining. And so having a waterproof camera on a day like today where you don't have to be worried about it. Second thing is that, as you can see, I'm standing right here on the edge of a cliff, but I can choose my camera angle after I've actually filmed. So all of this stuff takes place in camera and then you edit it on the app later. And so even if you miss something or your camera's pointing in the wrong direction, it doesn't matter because it takes shots from everywhere. And it's probably just the most fun camera that I've ever used. If you've never tried a 360 camera, then it can be something that takes a little to get your head around. But once you get used to it and you can figure out where the angles are, then it really is quite an amazing creative little tool. Anyway, let's see if we can find our way down to Zor Beach. Made it down. Probably one of the least accessible beaches in Shetland. Red sand and the, the blue of the sea. And even on a miserable day like today, it is still just so stunning. Another thing I love about this camera is the stabilization within it. You can be running, doing all kinds of different stuff, and it, the shot just looks completely steady like you're on a gimbal. A couple of disadvantages of this camera, the audio in it is not the best. Here's a sample of what it sounds like. I'm currently using my Rode mic, but here's what it sounds like with just using the camera's audio. And as you can tell, it's not the best. I mean, you might get away with it, but if you wanted something that was a bit more professional, then you would need to invest in a better mic. I love one of the ways how it gets rid of the selfie stick as well. It's very creative and you're able to look like you've almost got a drone that's following you. Although it might look a bit weird, the position of your hand. The only thing that you've got to watch for is where it stitches from. So if I stand like this, then as you can see, it gets rid of some of my face and looks a bit awkward. But once the camera's pointed slightly a little bit further away from you, then it does look a bit better. Another disadvantage to the camera is that it's not the best in low light. It's got quite a small sensor, but, uh, but in low light it gets really noisy really quickly and when you try to bump up the, the ISO it doesn't work the best and you just end up with noisy grainy footage. This version I've got is the Insta360 1R and it's modular. I got the, the twin edition which comes with a a 4K action cam mod, which turns it basically into a GoPro. But if I'm honest, since I bought the camera, I've never ever used that. I find that the 360 camera does what the action cam did, but you've also got the option of doing what you want with the 360 version of it. One of the things that I do find, this is my second 360 cam, because the first one, the lenses are a little bit exposed. And although this one comes with some lens guards, it's a little bit exposed at times and you've got to be careful because if you chip the front element then you can see it and that's what happened to some of the footage that I used to have with my old camera. So you do have to be a little bit careful with it. For being an action camera it can be a little bit fragile. As I said to you before, 
it is waterproof up to four meters, uh, five meters, I think it is. So, yeah, you're able to do things like this. And not be worried about whether or not it would end up being damaged. But oh no, I absolutely love this camera. Anyway, we're gonna try and get a picture of Zor before we try and find our way back up to the family, back up the top of the hill. Okay, so what I've got here is, if you can look on here, I've got this big rock here in front of us that's kind of making up part of my foreground with some of these other rocks here. And then the waves coming in and the foam off that create a leading line leading along the beach that I'm using a one second exposure at F11 at ISO 250. And then what I'm just waiting on is a, a wave coming in. And then just taking a picture of that as it kind of goes out and then hoping to get a little bit of a long exposure with this along the beach. Those of you who have followed the channel for a little while, then you'll know that I'm a bit scared of using my camera in the sea because I lost one to it before. But uh, I'm trying to stay as far out of it as I can. Here's a nice big wave, hopefully this will be able to come in. Uh, not quite, maybe, yeah, maybe. I'm gonna get one of just the sea as well. Right, I need to try and figure my way back up this over here. It seems that once again, I've annoyed my family by taking too long to try to get some pictures. But I'm sure that some of you other guys who like photography have similar issues at times. Anyway, wish me all the best. What a great afternoon at Zor Beach. If ever you're in Shetland and you're heading up to Aishness, which is one of the most famous points, you've got to stop at Zor or Rose Sands. I just think Zor's a cooler name. And yes, I obviously did make it back up the hill. It was quite the climb, but definitely worth it. The Insta 360 ONE R, I really love this camera, as I said to you. But there are some drawbacks, and I've tried to say some of those in the video already. But also, if you see the screen here, this is one of the things that you have to do with it. You can either use the app, or you can use a free uh, program called the Insta360 Studio, which you can download off their website. And because it's 360 footage, you really need a 360 editor in order to be able to do that. Now, the app itself is really good. You can explore it, and you can see some. If you go to Stories, uh, then what you can do is you can see that there are different types of shots that you can do with the footage that you have. Some of them's very creative and clever. And I'll show you an example of one that I did just the other week when I was uh, down visiting my parents at the Kelpies when we went on a cycle ride. And you'll see that uh, playing just now and shows you what you're able to do very quickly within the app with some of the creative uh, aspects and the creative shots that you can do. That would probably take you a really long time if you were using something like Final Cut or Premiere or DaVinci in order to edit the footage. But it all happens within the app here. It's very clever and sometimes you don't even need now to download the clips onto your, your device first. You can do it straight off. It connects with the camera and operates wirelessly. If I was to connect with the camera here, then as you can see from the screen, then it scans for the camera. Actually, I need to turn on the camera first. Um, but once I've done that, it will connect to the, the, the camera. You've got to set it up initially, but once you've done that, you're then able to do that. Now, some, some of you might think, well, that's quite a long, windy process, and I suppose it is. And that's where you've got that trade-off between using 360 or something like a GoPro where you've got a fixed lens or the fixed lens on this particular device as well. But I prefer having the option of being able to go in and reframe my shots and choose what I want to do with them. And as I said, if you want to make any kind of creative clips, then you can go in and do that afterwards. You wouldn't be able to do these type of clips on anything other than a 360 camera. And that's why I really like this camera. It might not be for everyone. It's not good for every scenario or every situation. But one of the things I've found as I've been creating this vlog is that actually it's been a camera that I've really enjoyed the process of using. And I think that probably I'll use it more for doing these type of things in the future rather than switching between. I only have one camera. A lot of, you'll see a lot of people, they use a secondary camera, one for talking to and one for taking their photos. And, and something like this, or even your mobile phone, is able to do 
to do that. It might not get you the professional clips. You know, when I first started looking into video stuff, I thought that everything that said 4K or 1080, it just meant that it was a particular quality and therefore you were guaranteed good footage if you had that, that written on your camera or if it was able to take that. But what I've realized over time as I've looked into this is that it's to do with sensor size. It's to do with lenses and things like that that enable to make your footage look different, shutter speeds, all these kind of things that initially I just thought if I shot in 4K then I would get good footage, but all that does is give you a particular type of resolution. It doesn't talk about what types of colors is in it, what the dynamic range is like of that sensor. But certainly for a camera of this size, as you can see from the footage, other than it being a bit wet and there's lots of uh, rain on the, on the camera, that can't be helped when you're filming on a day like this, regardless of what camera you use. I really like this footage and I really like what this camera can do. So as always, we're gonna go and look at edit one of the photos that I took uh, on the day trip to Zoa. It, it was one of those days where you really hoped for better conditions, but we didn't have better conditions. But uh, it was a great day all round and it's still, as I said, and many times in the video, you're probably fed up hearing me say this, it is a stunning place. So I like this, this particular image here that I took. And as you can see, we've gone from this to this. Now, now I did set this up particularly for a long exposure shot. So I shot this at one second just to get those streams in the water, uh, those nice white lines that it shows that water with the moving type effect that you get only when you have a slower shutter speed. Shot this at F11 and at ISO 250. And I shot it on my 18mm Samyang F2.8. And as I said before, that there's a lot of vignette, and when I was using the ND filter, and I ruined my ND filter. I need to get some new ND filters. The step up ring got stuck on it, and when I tried to take it off, um, it managed to jam it and break something. So now my ND filter's not working. So that was a casualty of today's trip. But one of the challenges of that was that when I've, I've cropped this image, as you can see from, from here, and although I had the whole of the rock in at the bottom right, which makes up a major part of the foreground, that when it came to cropping it to keep the horizon level, I had to either compromise on slight edge of the rock or I had to have a squint horizon. Now there may be apps and stuff that would enable you to make, I don't know, a content fill or content aware fill and stuff that would maybe enable you to to, to make this uh, you know, not have to happen, but uh, I had to compromise in one of these areas. So if I was to go back, as I said, this channel's about learning and failing together. If I was to go back and take this picture again, I would make some more room uh, in the corner so I wasn't chopping off part of that rock. So if I go into this and you'll see what I've been able to do, I've lifted the exposure a little bit. And in the curves, I've made a simple S curve. I've boosted the res just a little in the shadows, but. I didn't change it that much because the, the sand was already a really bright red kind of colour. Boosted the blues a little in the, the highlights too. Uh, lifted the contrast just slightly, taken down the highlights, lifted the shadows, uh, added some of the whites just to make those streaks in the water uh, more punchy and I've taken the blacks down a bit. Uh, the temperature uh, I've kept as it was, uh, increased the tint a little and the vibrance. Again the vibrance doesn't it is different from saturation. Vibrance kind of brings out the colours that are not as obvious within the, the scene itself. There's probably a better technical term for what vibrance does, but that's certainly what it looks like to me. And the oranges, I've brought them down a little towards the reds, and I've increased the greens and the saturation so you could see uh, them within the, the rocks and the cliffs in the distance. And the aquas, I've just saturated them a little and the blues as well, just to bring that contrast between the reds and the blues in the water. Not really done much in terms of effects. I never even added a vignette because then it would be distracting from the, the rock which makes up the foreground in the, the image. And often I would add a little vignette just to draw your eye in, but I think the leading line itself of the, uh, the, the where the water ends up on the beach, it kind of takes your eye into the scene, round the corner into the where those two kind of almost look like heads peeking up at the top of the cliffs. I've increased the, the exposure just on the rock here. And in the sky, if you were to look at what it was like without it, it was just dull. There was no light in it at all. So I've just added a, a bit of dehaze to it, decreased the exposure 
and added the contrast because that's really what it was like. It was just a dull, cloudy day. And I have taken away from the corner where the, the ND filter was vignetting on the, on the picture, I've increased the exposure to try and match it to what the rest of the image was like. All in all, I was really happy with this image. It's just a shame that I hadn't cropped it or hadn't framed it right within the original scene. But sometimes you learn from these things and hopefully next time we'll take a bit more effort in composing. But with the weather and all the things that were around that, it was, uh, this is what we ended up with. Anyway, till next time, have a great week and we'll see you next time on Chet London 360.